So when I first started this channel, one of my first stops was right here at the Military Museum of North Florida. And today we're back to uh, check out a living history event that they have here. And uh, man, they have all sorts of military vehicles here. There's a Black Hawk helicopter over there. There's Shermans, there's artillery, there's a Greyhound, some half tracks, a deuce and a half. I'm really excited to uh, be able to share this with you today. So let's go and see uh, what we can learn today. And check these out. Here's a few Jeeps, of course. You can't have a military show without a few Jeeps. But these are uh, representing military police variations from the uh, 506 Screaming Eagles, 101st Airborne. You don't realize how many different variations of Jeeps there are until uh, you see them in person. Oh. And this one, some vehicle data. Manufacturer's Ford. This one's located from uh, Jacksonville, and the date of delivery, 1124 of 1944. <laughs> That's cool. And you can see this one has a Thompson tucked away in the dash here. And uh, ooh, MP44 action. And uh, this one here, we got a carbine with a retractable stock. And uh, the old bazooka. <laughs> Check this guy out. Seventy-six millimeter anti-tank, used from 1951 to 62. And here is a World War II weapons carrier, three-quarter ton. And you see, you got the you got the 50 mounted. And what do we have here? talk about interesting huh oh, this is cool too looks like a crash vehicle Let's see what we can learn about this guy so this is for United States Air Force it's a rescue truck for forcible entry emergency rescue year 1953 it's pretty interesting so on airfields and things like that, if uh, things go wrong, you need a uh, rescue personnel. Closer look here at some of the equipment. <laughs> it's pretty neat. A machete compartment. Now everyone needs one of those. And here's the back. And taking another look at this guy. This is a water weasel. <laughs> Yeah, but this weasel, that's pretty interesting. I've never seen one before. You can imagine in the uh, jungles in the Pacific Theater, this thing would come in handy. And here we have the M725 Ambulance, date of delivery, 1968, Fort Benning, Georgia. Oh yeah, a little different than uh, the one I was on. <laughs> but uh, let's take a look at the back here. Well, this part hasn't changed much. You have your steps to come down. And you can have four soldiers on litters. The ins and outs of a grenade here, a German grenade. Here they have several anti-tank mines. Bouncing Betty, right there. So it's called a bouncing Betty because when you stepped on it, it would shoot up to about waist level and then explode, causing maximum damage. You have some glass mines, a few other grenades here, potato mashers, bundle grenades, and Panzer Shrek, Panzer Faust, and we're here at an American outpost. We got together. Every Springfield sniper version and the standard infantry version. And you have your M1, and then you have your Browning 30 caliber, and we have 
our uh, communications area. Pretty interesting. And obviously your medic helmet, your handheld radio. It's pretty interesting. And uh, you got a first aid kit. Really cool visual. This is by far one of the most impressive Russian arms collections that uh, I have seen. Wow. So here's some PPS-43 submachine guns. Oh my gosh. PPSH-41. You can see the different magazines there. You have the standard mag and then you have your drum magazines. Oh my god. Wow. SVT-40. Two moves in the gas, uh, PU sniper rifle. I'm not sure if it's just now. Wow, that is this guy here. Impressive. And then your Mose and the Gat carbines. That's weird, you know. A little shorter than your standard rifle there. You can see the barrel length difference. Two different variations of Russian grenades. Flamethrower. Oh, wow. And look at the uh, nozzle piece to the flamethrower. That's pretty unique. I've never seen that before. Wow. And you have your Maxim machine gun. These are always pretty uh, interesting to me, how they could wheel them around and you have that armored plate there for protection of the crew, obviously. And they are belt fed. So cool. Oh, and here's some body armor. <laughs> how cool is this? Aktum. This is awesome. Now these aren't replicas, these are all authentic vehicles that can still fire, that still move, and, uh, and during their reenactment they're actually firing blanks. They're not using any gas propellants or anything like that. So we're in for a uh, pretty good treat here. Oh my gosh, wow. So we have three Shermans, scout car, and uh, here's your Greyhound. So I'm just giving you a look inside the uh, M3 Scout car here. So you have a 30 caliber. And crew. And it looks like you can even have another 30 cal on the side here. Really cool. And here's the M7 Priest. Self-propelled artillery. <laughs> 105 millimeter cannon. You have your 50 cal. Various small arms. Wow. If you ever wondered what a 50 caliber shell looked like, well, this is it. Obviously, it doesn't have the bullet up top, but this is the shell again. So you can see some sort of scale. Something else that's interesting is you can see the tracks. They're like individual links. Well, if they hit a mine or break something, they always carry extras. And they can easily change out a small section to keep going. So check this out. This is a 155 millimeter artillery piece. It's towed by a piece of machinery here. So it weighs 30,000 pounds. That's unbelievable. I wish, I hope this video is doing justice about just the sheer size of uh, this gun here. So the gun here, the 155 howitzer, can shoot up to 14 miles. A 100 pound piece of ordnance, 14 miles, and it had a killing radius of 300 yards. Three football fields. If you were within three football fields of this thing landing, uh, you were either gonna be severely wounded or uh, killed in action. They're getting ready to do a uh, live fire demo here. They're gonna fire the 50 cal and uh, some of the tank turrets here. And your uh, your Sherman's here. Africa, Sicily, France. 75 millimeter gun. Coaxial machine gun there. Usually the, there was a 
a driver that would sit there and he would man the machine gun, your driver, and then you would have a uh, gunner and your commander up top and you could see the 50. What's crazy to me is these tanks were uh, vastly underpowered compared to the uh, German tanks. But just being here in person, these are real authentic tanks. These things are massive. And the fact that they were still outmatched in World War II speaks volumes to the firepower of some of these machines that were made during this time. So they have three Shermans here, and they're all slightly different. Now these two have the 75 millimeter gun, but the bodies are different. This one here is one solid cast hole, so it's just one piece, and you can kind of see the difference here. This one is a welded hole, so it's a few different pieces, obviously because they had to weld it together. Um, usually about the same effectiveness of the armor, but this one here is different because it has a 105 millimeter gun, which is the same gun as the priest there. Obviously it's fires the same shell, but it's a little different, but just a very different caliber. So those are the differences, and that one has a welded hole as well. Just giving you a closer look at the difference in holes here. Here's your welded hole. And here is your cast hole. Again, one piece. And you can see the weld marks here. And the armor is a little more slanted up front. I just can't get over the sheer size of these guys. You can see this wood on the side. That was a little extra protection for the crew. It was uh, in hopes of uh, having a German Panzerfaust or Panzerschreck uh, detonate prior to hitting the armor. I'm not sure how effective it was, but that's an example of it there. And here's just another variation of a scout vehicle. I believe this is called the Greyhound. And uh, again, made for reconnaissance, quick and agile. Couldn't really engage enemy directly, but you have the 50, so you have some sort of protection. Just giving you a little look inside the uh, driver's seat here. And you got the Mondeus, the 50. Again, so all these are going to fire during the reenactment using blanks. And just giving you a closer look at that British scout vehicle there. This looks like an anti tank rifle. Just look at the size of this rifle. Wow. So awesome to see. And uh, you have the US Infantry and the British getting ready for their assault here shortly. Just giving you a better view of the uh, turret here on top of the uh, British scout car here. Quick look inside. Looks like a crew of three. One guy in the turret. Looks like that uh, A driver would man that anti-tank rifle there. Man, I just can't get over how big that thing is. closer look at the uh, Panzerfaust here. These were handheld by one soldier and you can see relatively simple but here's your warhead, a shaped charge and uh, they would remove that pin, squeeze that trigger and uh, Allied armor would be toast. These were very effective. And here is your Panzer Shrek. And the Panzer Shrek is more like your traditional bazooka and those are the shells there that it would fire or rounds I should say. Here's your motorcycle with your sidecar and your machine gun mounted. And I don't really know what this is called, but I remember in Saving Private Ryan they refer to it as the rabbit, so that's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> really neat. And just a closer look at the German half-track here. 
This would be used for carrying personnel in the back, mounted infantry, wounded soldier supplies, things like that. And here's a, some of the uh, armor and armaments here. And your standard German uh, infantry weapons. And your MG42, Hitler's buzzsaw. I think it can fire 1,200 rounds a minute, which is a staggering rate of fire. Yeah. And looks like there's another one there up in the uh, armor turret there. Now I'm behind the uh, German half track here. I don't think they see me. So here you go. Here's a view of inside the uh, German half track. Again, your driver, you have an A driver, someone manning the turret there. It looks like we're entering a German field hospital demo. Let's check out some of the equipment here. So here's some of the beds here for the field hospital. And uh, I don't know if you just heard, but the uh, very well-informed lady here said this is about 98% original stuff. And here is some of the syringes here. It's pretty heavy. All this stuff was reusable. It wasn't disposable like today. And here are some of the inoculations and other uh, medications that could be administered. And here's your needles. Again, those would be reusable as well. So this is a field cauterizing kit. Now this would help uh, stop any major bleeding by essentially burning the uh, artery or the veins shut and uh, in turn stop the bleeding. So that's pretty interesting that they had this technology then. And uh, oxygen tanks with the mask there. It's impressive. And uh, there's a real stretcher. Very, very impressive collection. So I stepped away from the show just for a second here. I wanted to show you some of this uh, wreckage here. Uh, I felt like it was too important not to share, but Green Cove Springs used to be a very large naval air station uh, during World War II. And in fact, if you were flying a carrier-based aircraft like the Hellcat, Corsair, Wildcat, things of that nature, you would most likely come here to train. I think almost 20,000 pilots came here to train. Well, when there's training, there's uh, crashes, unfortunately. And this is the wreckage of a Hellcat that crashed here, back in that direction. You can kind of see the, some of the uh, remains of one of the Hellcats here. And right here is the engine of a Corsair that crashed here as well. And a few of the pictures of the Corsair, if you don't know what it looks like. And here is piece of another wing from a Corsair. So the battle is getting ready to kick off and I'm not going to do much narration. Once uh, the machine gun fire starts and the tanks get fired up, you won't really be able to hear anything. So I won't really narrate too much, which I'm sure is welcome news to those of you watching. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's uh, go check out the reenactment.
so I've been to a few Civil War reenactments. Uh, this is my first World War II reenactment, and man, that brought it up to a whole new level. Um, just the pyrotechnics, the, you know, there's something about seeing those Shermans advance across that field. Man, that was, that was so awesome. And then, you know, having those main guns firing with the 50 cal chopping up the German position, that was, that was a really cool experience, and I'm so glad I came out here today. But uh, yeah, this was the uh, winter rally at the Military Museum of North Florida. And uh, that was awesome. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, catch you on the next one.